today we will start with the notions of uh, language acceptance by PDAs. There are two ways in which uh, PDA can accept languages, uh, but before that we need to define a concept uh, which is called the instantaneous description of a PDA. Instantaneous description of a PDA. The idea behind this is something like this that suppose a PDA is working and as you know we, we, we saw an example also last time that it works in discrete steps at every steps uh, the machine is in some state scanning an input symbol uh, top of the stack symbol and depending on that it changes the state changes the top symbol of the stack by something. Now imagine that as the PDA is working after a certain step we halt it. The kind of information that we need to restart the PDA once it is halted that is called the instantaneous description. Okay. So, I will define it properly. So, let us say I have a PDA remember PDA is a, a 7 tuple it, uh, it has a set of states q then the set of input symbol sigma gamma the set of stack alphabet or the gamma is the stack alphabet transition function the initial state right uh, the initial stack symbol and the set of final states. So, that defines some uh, defines a PDA and imagine that at some point of time the of the input the portion which is left is w the machine is in some state q and the stack contains is something gamma the entire contents of the stack is a string of overs gamma and that i am denoting by small gamma so if you give me this much of information it is clear that I can now from that step onwards simulate that PDA or PDA can PDA can work now again. So, suppose that something happened then we stop the PDA then some input symbols left the machine is in some state q and the contents of the stack. If these three pieces of information I have then we can see how the PDA will evolve in time in future. So, the description which captures this the overall state of the PDA at a certain instance is called the instantaneous description of PDA and as you uh, can see that an ID instantaneous description a uh, 3 tuple. So, the state w and gamma where q is the state in which the PDA is of course and w is the portion of the input string yet to be consu consumed input yet to be consumed and this gamma is the stack contents the clearly what we are saying is it did not matter really for what happens to the PDA in future that does not depend on the symbols it had seen already how did it come to the state or the evolution you know or history through which the current 
contents of the stack happened. So, once we have all this we, we have enough information to carry on and in fact, we can uh, define something which is a binary relation over the set of all IDs. So, what will be the set of all IDs? All tuples of the kind in which the first component is a state, second component is a string over sigma, third component is a string over the stack alphabet, right. So, a so what I am what, what we are trying to do now is to define a binary relation and it is denoted like this. This symbol is borrowed from logic and uh, it is called turnstile. You know I do not know whether you have seen such gates where you know you, the, you pull this and the gate opens. So, anyway this is called turnstile this symbol. So, we are defining a binary relation uh, that is using this symbol, I mean that binary relation will be denoted by this symbol and uh, over the set of IDs of a, of a particular PDA, you know there is some PDA and we are talking of the set of all IDs of that PDA and we are defining a binary relation. Now, this binary relation I should say what what the you know which which two IDs are related by this binary relation. So, we say that uh, Q okay, A W and then let us say x gamma that is related this particular this as you can see is an id this id is related to p w beta gamma holds this fact holds if the transition function delta is such that p beta is contained in delta of q a and x, where before that I should say that uh, we, we recall that delta of uh, you know delta is a function transition function which maps a state an input symbol or epsilon, A can be also epsilon and a stack symbol and that contains tuples like this and of course, it means that if the machine is in state Q and the symbol it wants to consume is or you know current either the input symbol is uh, the, the, the where the input head is, is the symbol A or A is epsilon and X is the top of the stack symbol. Then delta gives the possibilities of what will be the next state and what will be the string which will replace this top of the stack symbol. So, you know this this phrase makes sense that this tuple is contained in this because in general this is a set of such tuples right. So, so now is now maybe I should write this down where uh, a is an element of sigma union epsilon right and other things are clear from the context that p and q are states 
beta is a string over the stack alphabet gamma and uh, a as we said can be an input symbol uh, that is an element of sigma or it can be epsilon x is uh, stack alphabet uh, sorry st stack symbol and and now you can see that this has to be a string over the stack alphabet and uh, this beta is also a string over stack alphabet. So, the notation looks unfamiliar in the beginning, but what it is saying is very simple that suppose at some point of time the instantaneous description of the PDA is given by this 3 tuple, which means as we know that the current state is q and the input yet to be consumed is a w and the contents of the stack is x gamma. Uh, I think I told you that the way we suppose uh, we read the stack always this way top to bottom because normally when we write the stack contents it will be a string we write it from left to right. So, the left will left of the string leftmost symbol of that string corresponds to the topmost symbol of the stack right. So, in particular suppose the stack was a b b a c left to right the contents will write like this a b b a c ok. So, so therefore, when I when we write like this it is quite clear that capital X is the top of the stack symbol. From this id now we can give a kind of name that we can read it as that this id from this id the machine can go to this id. So, you can say that you can write it as derives or can derive in one step. You see, this is how we may read it if you wish that this i d i can derive in one step this i d. Why are we saying that can derive instead of saying derives? Because we remember that in general our machine is a non deterministic machine. So, from some point of time, so that means when this particular i d holds in general there will be several i d's next i d which is possible. So, in particular what we are saying that next i d can be this next instantaneous description can be this and that is the reason is very simple because we we go from this i d to this i d following a legal move because delta q a x contains p beta right. Now, we will define the two notions of uh, acceptance. Before that again, we will what we will do is let me denote by this symbol, you know re read this symbol as can derive in one step if we write i 1 i 2 and put this symbol in between what I am trying to say is that this is also a binary relation over i d s, but this binary relation is derived from this uh, particular binary relation which is can derive in one step and this really means that i 1 can derive in 0 or more steps the i d i 2. So, let me write it down this actually is saying by definition i 1 can derive in 0 or more steps the i d i 2. So, in other words you see that 
those of you who, who would like to put it that way that this particular relation is nothing but the reflexive transitive closure of that relation. So, in other words for every i d it is the case is not it because in 0 step you can go from this i d to itself that is all it means and suppose I had uh, i going to i 1 to i 2 dot 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 i n to so this is i 0 and this is i. So, what it what we are saying is that the our machine is such that that from the i d i 0 it can go to the i d i 1 from i 1 it can go to the i d i 2 and so on. Then this situation we can write it as i 0 in 0 or more steps can go to or can derive the i d i right. So, this is the uh, this is the concept we will use to define the notion of acceptance and I should also say that when there is a possibility of confusion when there are more number of uh, more than one PDA uh, you are talking about simultaneously or considering simultaneously. So, then under to say that which you know which set of which IDs you are talking of you mention the machine name uh, for which these IDs are. So, if I recall that our machine we said this this machine M and if we are talking about the basically that fact that M can derive in one step something then more technically one writes M below this and similarly this means the machine M can derive in 0 or more steps uh, the I d I 2 starting from the I d I 1. Now, we will define as we said the two notions of acceptance by PDAs. The first notion is the kind of no, uh, acceptance notion we are used to. So, PDA acceptance by final states so again let me write down uh, p d a or p d a m as q sigma gamma delta q 0 z 0 and some set of final states f and now the language accepted by m by final states. So, l m the language accepted by m by final states is defined in this manner that L m is the set of all strings w of course, they have to be input strings. So, the set of all strings w such that from the i d q 0 remember q 0 is the initial state q 0 w and z 0 in 0 or more steps we go to p epsilon and any beta right for some p in f and beta in gamma star ok. 
all right so now what it is saying it is saying that look the language accepted by this machine m by so called final states is the set of all strings w right such that initially when you have on the input that string w and of course the initially what will you have the machine will have initial state is q0 and the only stack symbol only thing in the stack is the initial stack symbol namely z0 so this is the initial id initial instantaneous description if the machine can go from this initial description to an id where the state is one of the final states right f is remember the set of final states of the machine m having consumed the input so remember that second component is what is left in the input so now it says that there is nothing left in the input to be consumed no symbol so that string empty it is right now the input entire input has been consumed so what is left is an empty string and any stack contains we, we don't care some beta so so long in other words so long the machine can go from its initial id to an id where it is in the final state is in some final state having consumed the entire input such a string w will be in the language accepted by m as i said there is another notion of uh, acceptance and that is called uh, acceptance by so let me by empty stack So, we say for the same machine M, N M is the language accepted by M by empty stack. Okay, where this n m is defined like this that this n m is again the set of all input strings right such that again from the initial i d which is q 0 w z 0 right this is of course the initial i d the machine can go to some q and having consumed the input entirely so here it is epsilon and the stack is empty right so that means see third component gives the contents of the stack so stack is also empty correct so i should write that for any q in q in other words we don't care where the state finally is so long the input is consumed and the stack is empty right so all those strings which can take the machine from the initial id to an id where the entire input is consumed and simultaneously the stack is empty such strings are in the language accepted by the machine m by empty stack so these two notions uh, 
you know this notion of course looks pretty uh, usual you know finite state machine also we said strings which can take the machine from initial state to final state and this that this is a kind of uh, you know the same way this particular definition has been def uh, you know we, we define this particular notion of acceptance and this notion seems new the reason is actually we will find that this notion is more easy to use and we will also show that if for a particular language we have a PDA which accepts that language by final state then there is some other PDA which will accept it by empty stack and vice versa. So, in that sense both these notions are equivalent. So, in other words if a PDA or let me put it this way PDA can accept a language by final state if and only if some PDA can accept that same language by empty stack. So, these two are kind of they, they are equivalent notions and depending on the situation whichever is convenient uh, we use one of the two notions. Last time in the last lecture we had uh, given an example of a PDA to accept uh, the language if you recall the language was w w reverse and w was a string in 0 1 star. This is the language um, it is kind of even length palindrome the language of all even length palindromes and uh, we described the PDA and the same PDA if you recall it had three states q 0, q 1 and q 2 and uh, we gave the give give the transition diagram uh, or not diagram, but the transition function and that uh, machine I am re describing here and uh, in a tabular form I am this is the delta right delta of m and what I would like to kind of argue or convince you that L m the language accepted by final state is is this particular language. So, this is what I would like to uh, convince you, but uh, just recall so essentially what it was doing is that uh, initially uh, during the w part it is in uh, more or less in the state state q 0 entire time it is it is scanning the w part and depending on a 0 it would push an a depending on a 1 it would push a b on the stack without uh, taking off the top symbol and then once the this part comes then it will check off the input symbol 0 with the top of the stack symbol a see that is that time it is in state q 1 the it is in state uh, the is q 1 q 1 and the input symbol is 0 top of the stack is a remains in q 1. So, it is basically removing that top stack symbol meaning that this 0 has been checked off and uh, this is how we do and by the way how did we go from this part to that part how does the machine go from uh, state q 0 to q 1 it essentially guesses that now that w part is over and we should go over to the w r part we are now we are going to scan the w r part once that guess is reflected by you know it is in q 0 on epsilon whatever be the top of the stack symbol z 0 a or b it moves to the state q 1 and without disturbing the top of the stack symbol right. And uh, you know of course, one could describe the transition function in this manner, but a tabular 
format is somewhat not a very very easy to view there is a graphical uh, way of representing a PDA which I will describe. The way to represent such a PDA is uh, you know somewhat familiar uh, way that we represented uh, uh, our finite state machines. See it is also going to be a uh, graph with nodes and each node is a state right and each arrows will each arrow will represent a transition. So, this has three states, but maybe first of all I should clearly write what the machine is that it has three states as we can see there q 0, q 1, q 2. What is the input alphabet it is of course, 0 1 what is the stack alphabet? Stack alphabet is Z 0, A, B okay. and uh, what is the initial state it is Q 0, what is the initial stack symbol Z 0 and uh, of course, we had the transition function data which I had put down as a table and the set of final states. Here the set of final states that set consists only of one state and that is Q 2. Okay. So, this is our machine and delta is elaborated in this table. So, all that information we can capture nicely in a diagram and the it is called that this kinds of diagram will be called the transition diagram of PDAs. And uh, so, as we said that for each state we will have uh, node in the graph. So, let me say this is q 0, this is q 1, this is q 2. So, let us let see for example, take this um, from q 0, take the first one, very first one, q 0 on input 0, uh, top of the stack symbol is z 0, it can go to q 0 and writing a and then of course, re re retaining uh, the top of the stack symbol. This situation this is you know from q 0 it is going back to q 0. So, it is as you can imagine it is a self loop and here what what we what this arrow um, has you know I, I must mention the what is the input symbol. So, on what input is this transition possible uh, we said 0 and now the other two information is the what is the top of the stack symbol z 0 and that is going to be replaced by the string a z 0 right. So, you can see this. So, let us take the next one that is again such a such a loop and you know I will just write one more possibility here that if it input is 1 and uh, top of the stack symbol is z 0, then it writes basically corresponds to this, maybe this is getting crowded. So, I will write it here. So, so, is the notation clear now that we go from state q 0 back to q 0 on input 0, when the top of the stack symbol is z 0 and we replace the top of the stack z 0 by this string. In other words, if I have a in more generally, so let me write this supposing this is p and q and I had a and comma right x da x stroke beta. What does it mean? That q beta 
is in delta of p a x. So, so, suppose this is the situation that on state from state p on input a input symbol a with the stop of the stack symbol x the machine can go to state q replacing the top of the stack x by the stack string beta such as this thing we are writing like this you know it is clear that we are going from state p to q the symbol on input symbol a clearly it can be epsilon also you know if 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 this was uh, this was epsilon this this particular thing will be epsilon and uh, you know we are saying what is the string that replaces the top of the stack symbol so in these cases if you see we are not removing anything we are just pushing another symbol so another way of saying that is that z0 is replaced by az0 right and so on uh, so maybe let me write one more thing so q0 0 a so q0 uh, from q0 on 0 and if the top of the stack is a then we replace it by a a right then uh, third one is uh, 0 b we replace it by a b and uh, maybe I can complete it q 0 1 a uh, 1 a we go back to q 0 writing b and then of course we are just uh, pushing b on this 1 b will be b b right and so on and finally q 0 from q 0 you see on epsilon whatever be the stack symbol we can go to q 1 and we do not change the stack just that same symbol remains. So, as in this we can write like this that it is saying uh, that on epsilon we can always go from, from q 0 to q 1 if the top of the stack symbol is top of the stack symbol is z 0 we do not change it. Similarly, epsilon uh, a a epsilon b b okay. and when do we go you can see that there is only one uh, I'm, okay. so this part I am not writing you see that from q 1 so this is actually easy right. So, may, maybe I can write it there are only two such things going from q 1 to q 1. So, um, on 0 if the top is basically epsilon here that, that means this a is being popped 1 b is epsilon and here we will go taking this transition and that is on epsilon if it is z 0 we can write it z 0 right and the fact that q 2 is the uh, the only accepting state we you know denote it the the way we uh, mark the final states or accepting states of a finite state machine by putting this concentric circles two 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 concentric circles same way any state in which you know this this kind of two circles uh, are there then such a state is the final state or an accepting state. This is not part of the diagram right this is I was explaining the what in general a transition is uh, right the, if this is the transition this is the corresponding diagram right. And I would now like to explain that this machine accepts by final state the language wwr so we remember uh, by definition for that machine m pda m uh, the language accepted by final states is the set of all binary strings such that uh, you know each of those strings 
you know it, that is this this id from this id the machine can go to that id what is the initial id of course the initial state is q0 this is the initial state by the way we mark the initial state the same way as we did in case of uh, finite state machines the initial state of a pda will be marked by an arrow coming from nowhere into the state so that is q0 w z0 initially only the stack contains z0 and all those strings which can take the machine from the initial state to the final state having consumed the input entirely and it's not too difficult to see that this machine is like that so for example let's take an first of all uh, what happens when a string is in the language so let us see 0 1 1 and uh, correspondingly we will have so this particular string is in the language uh, l right we define this language l to be the set of all uh, strings which are of the form wwr and clearly that this particular string is in the language what happens so so if i if i see you know so let me write the initial id q0 0 1 1 1 1 0 um, then i'll have z0 now which of so there are several things which are possible actually if you see on state q0 um, the, when the our first input symbol is 0 so therefore this particular uh, this particular transition is applicable in the diagram um, 0 I have z0 here and this therefore I should can do this but also see this another transition is possible so non deterministically we need to choose the machine need to choose for that string to accept which one of this uh, it should use uh, you can see that in the first phase in the when it is in q0 the idea is that it should push on the stack a string which is equivalent to or you know really a, an encoding or uh, another rendering of the w part right so instead of taking this particular transition let us say that machine non deterministically chooses to remain in q0 consuming this 1 1 1 i mean consuming this 0 so what is left of the string is this particular string and it pushes the symbol a on the stack so i'll have a z0 right then uh, again instead of going from q0 to epsilon i mean q1 because it kind of guessed guesses that as yet the w part is not over so from here it will go to q0 it will consume this symbol so 1 1 1 0 then for this corresponding to this one it will write b a z 0 right do you see which transition it is taking it is taking that i have one and the top of the things stack symbol is a and therefore this a is replaced by the string b a that is what we did this a is replaced by this b a right and uh, again the third again in the same manner it will remain in q0 this is the particular computation path and uh, so it is it consumes this one so the what is left in this input is 1 1 0 and corresponding to this one uh, uh, symbol b is pushed so b a a z0 right and now non deterministically the machine guesses that it should move to state q1 
I, I should emphasize, I mean once more remind you this non-deterministic machine working is not really anything mysterious. All it means simultaneously all these paths are possible and we are just talking of the accepting path. So, really speaking the remember that we said that non-determinism means that whenever there is a choice machine makes two copies of itself and pursues both the possibilities simultaneously. We are just looking at that possibility which will take the machine to uh, the accepting situation. So, now in that path the machine will go from q 0 to q 1 without consuming any symbol from the input and without disturbing anything uh, which is on top of the stack. right? So, th this is the one that we are this transition is what we are using. So, here the top of the stack symbol is b that is fine. So, it will remain as b in fact, nothing else will get changed. So, q 1 1 1 0 then b a a z 0 and now in q 1 you will keep using the positions which are there on 0 if the top of the stack symbol is a you will remove that and consume this 0 on 1 if the top of the stack symbol is b you will consume that uh, consume the input and pop off the symbol and that is exactly what will happen. So, 1 top of the stack is uh, see I made I think a mistake uh, because so let us see there are 0 1 1. So, when the so this a and I you know for this another b should be put and I wrote here an a this a is corresponds to this a. Okay. So, so let us see I mean that was a mistake, but you can see what is happening q 0 1 1 1 0. So, the symbol is 1 top of the stack symbol is b under this situation if it wishes to remain in q 0 what it should it do. So, 1 top of the stack symbol is b right 1 b. So, it would replace this b by b b that is what it is doing here right. So, this will be also b I am sorry but now you can see things will work out. So, q 1 it sees 1 top of the stack symbol is b. So, if you go to that you will see that it is the machine will can do this that consume this. So, in the input all we will have is 1 0 this is popped off b a right and q 1 this 1 is consumed. So, only thing left on the input will be the just a symbol this and this will be a and of course, there is z 0 here always right. From here it can take come to this id q 1 0 a. So, this 0 you can check off with the top top of the stack symbol a. So, so let me write it here. Uh, q 1 epsilon this is over. So, z 0 and in q 1 you can always go to q 2 without consuming any symbol. So, it is q 2 there is nothing left in the input. So, it remains so and this is z 0. So, what has happened? So, you see we can say that from this initial id the machine on so many in so many steps can go to q 2 epsilon right and z 0. So, therefore, clearly this particular string 0 1 1 1 1 0 is in the language accepted by the machine by final state m because this state is the final state and so on. And therefore, it is not difficult to see that 
any string in this language will be accepted by that machine, but that is not enough. You know, we can convince ourselves of, the, of that that any string of L will indeed be accepted by the machine M by uh, final state, but we need also to show that a string which is not in the language cannot be accepted by the machine, right? And that part is a little more involved possibly to argue formally. But you see what it means is that if I take a string which is not of the form wwr, then what can this machine do? You know, let us just informally argue. What can this machine do on a string which is not of the form wwr? So, let us take a simple string which is not of the form wwr and let us see what we can do. Okay, let me let me argue what happens on a string which is uh, not in the language, right. So, on such a string the uh, or, or we should be able to argue the machine can never go from q 0 to q 2 totally consuming the input epsilon. Right. See, for example, take uh, take this string 0, 1, 1, 1. Right. So, this is not of the form wwr because when you chop it in the middle, this is 0, 1 and that is not same as that. Now, you see what can this machine do on, 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 on this machine do on this string? It can go to the state q 2, can it? You see, it look at this. So initially, do you, do, first of all, can it go? Can can on this string, the machine go from Q zero to Q two? Yes, actually, it can. You see, what it can do is initially the stack is is Z zero. Remember, initially the only thing in the stack is uh, this thing, and the machine is in Q zero. So, on q 0 on epsilon right it is without consuming anything it uh, you know goes to q 1 and this is there and in q 1 again on z 0 it goes to q 2. So, it can indeed so right in the without doing anything without consuming any symbol the machine can move from q 0 to q 2, but is the string accepted no because if you recall, it has to consume totally the input string and also simultaneously go from the initial state q 0 to q 2. So, just because it can go from q 0 to q 2 is not sufficient reason for the string to be accepted, the string must be consumed. And now, you can see that so, uh, so that that does not work. So, therefore, what it can do of course, is the uh, many other things it can do remember it is a non deterministic machine, it can keep pushing the symbols corresponding to 0 and 1. So, you know z 0 then a then b right and suppose it it at this point it was in q 0. So, it chose to move to q 1, then again this symbol can be you know it can consume this symbol having removed the top symbol b and now the input is 1 and the machine is in a. See there is in q 1 if you have the input symbol 1 and the top of the stack is a, it is not defined and we, we do not have a uh, you know machine cannot do anything in fact no, no transition is defined. So, you can see that this will not lead to q 2 and this way you can argue uh, wherever it may go from it has to start from q 0 you know it has to sometime move to q 1 and then finally, to q 2 and the only way it can do so move from q 0 to q 2 having totally consumed the input and 
the the you know take this transition and go to q2 is only for those strings which are in the language and uh, next lecture we are going to talk about the acceptance by empty stack with some example and the equivalence of these two notions.